The following program is produced by Project Bait and does not reflect the views of this station. This is Mark Wells and this is the Wells Report for For My People. I'm sure we all remember those sound bites of the Reverend Jeremiah Wright that were endlessly played on all the major news networks in the winter of 2008. Those so-called inflammatory remarks by Reverend Wright threatened to derail the presidential aspirations of the then first African American candidate with a realistic chance of winning the nation's highest honor. The controversy caused by Reverend Wright's remarks led to the then Senator Barack Obama's Philadelphia speech on race, which was hailed as one of the greatest speeches on race of all time. Recently, Wright stirred up the pot of media criti criticism once again. At the 95th annual Hampton University Ministers Conference, Wright was asked if he had spoken to President Obama since he took office. Wright responded, quote, them Jews ain't going to let him talk to me, unquote, and that Obama would talk to him in, quote, five years when he's a lame duck or in eight years when he's out of office, unquote. According to Wright, quote, they will not let him talk to somebody who calls a spade what it is. I said from the beginning, he's a politician, I'm a pastor. He's got to do what politicians do, unquote. Now, whether you're one who agrees with Wright, disagrees but believes he has the right to speak out, or you wish he'd just go away, Wright's comments are particularly noteworthy considering Obama's recent speech in Egypt and a video that recently surfaced on YouTube. In the four-minute video, a group of Israelis continuously threatened the president making gratuitous usage of the F-word and N-word, questioned his U.S. citizenship, and called him a terrorist who deserved to get shot. Although I would call Obama's attempt to reach out to the Muslim world courageous, I must also say that we should revisit some of Wright's comments, considering some of Obama's actions in the past five months. In April of 2008, Wright appeared at the National Press Club after months of being demonized in the mainstream media. When asked what he meant when he referred to Obama's Philadelphia speech on race as, quote, what a politician had to say, unquote, Wright replied, quote, if Senator Obama did not say what he said, he would never get elected, unquote. Wright went on to say, quote, politicians say what they say and do what they do based on electability, based on sound bites, based on polls, unquote. Simply put, Reverend Wright explained a trend amongst politicians that he saw continue with Obama. Politicians say and do what is necessary in order to get elected. Given Obama's campaign promises, is it that this statement is not true or are we simply giving the now President Obama a free pass? Well, let's ascertain the facts. Before being elected, we saw Obama visit sacred sites in Israel wearing a traditional Jewish kapel. What we didn't see was Obama visiting any Muslim mosques. As we all know, at that time, many Americans believed Obama to be a Muslim, an association that many feared would cost him the election. Now that he's president, Obama can address a Muslim audience with the greeting, Assalamu Alaikum, and highlight the fact that he's known Islam on three different continents. Politicians say and do what they need to in order to get elected. All of us also remember when Senator Obama was in the midst of a heated race with Senator Hillary Clinton when the subject of jobs and NAFTA came up. The passing of NAFTA by Clinton's husband and then-President Bill Clinton had been blamed for the loss of millions of American jobs, and Obama was using this fact to his advantage in his battle against Hillary. During a debate with Clinton in February of 2008, Obama said he would, quote, make sure that we renegotiate, unquote, and that we should, quote, use the hammer of a potential opt-out as leverage to ensure that we actually get labor and environmental standards that are enforced, unquote. During his historic run for the White House, Obama made himself appear to be a savior of the working man by overturning a deal that had devastated American workers. But when our Canadian neighbors caught wind of Obama's statements, they were told not to worry because Obama was simply telling people what they wanted to hear so that he could secure votes. We have since received word that NAFTA will not be renegotiated. Politicians say what is necessary in order to get elected. If I remember correctly, Obama also promised that 95% of all Americans would receive a tax break while the 5% richest Americans would see an end to the tax breaks they were given by the Bush administration. 
Question, how can 95% of all voting Americans get a tax break when 40% of all voting Americans don't pay any federal income taxes in the first place? According to the Tax Foundation, under Obama's tax plan, 44% of all voters would not have a tax liability and the majority of them would receive an IRS check every year. Add this to the fact that Obama has sought to expand the Bush administration's controversial wiretapping policy and cancel U.S. involvement in the Second World Conference on Racism, just like Bush, and one has to wonder, what sort of change does Obama really have in mind? So why did the U.S. pull out of the Second Conference on Racism? Apparently, the Obama administration had a problem with any language that dealt with reparations for slavery, the, label, the labeling of the transatlantic slave trade as a crime against humanity, and any language that labeled Israeli action against Palestinians as racist. With this in mind, many months ago, I asked many African Americans if the pride in seeing a black president would overshadow the duty of that president to uphold justice and the rights of citizens throughout the world. Many African Americans voiced utter disgust at the arrogance and policies of eight years of George W. Bush. But what if George W. Bush was black? To be sure, President Barack Obama is not President George W. Bush. President Obama exudes a certain cool, intelligence, charisma, and swagger that Bush could never emulate. But does that give Obama a pass to kill millions of non-Americans, disregard the civil liberties of American citizens, and avoid any serious conversation about race in a country that his own attorney general has called a nation of cowards? If you answer yes to any of those questions, I would ask, what difference would it have made if we had elected John McCain or Hillary Clinton? The bottom line is, it would be difficult for any American president to uphold American domestic or foreign policy and still be considered a social justice advocate. And none, of, and none of Barack's charm, Michelle's grace, or Sasha or Malia's adorability can change that. This is Mark Wells, and this has been the Wells Report for For My People. Hi. Springtime is home improvement time, and I'm here from All Home Improvement to solve your repair needs. For an estimate, call area code 313-896-3603. Again, area code 313-896-3603. There are three basic necessities every business needs, a business plan, a bookkeeper, and a website. Call Project Bait for all three. Call 313-871-3333. That's 313-871-3333.